All right, Daniel, uh, another topic uh, came to discussion today, and uh, this was uh, John 18.38, not the whole verse, but uh, it says, Pilate said, setteth unto him, what is truth? So that's the name of this uh, fireside, what is truth? What was Pilate talking about? Why did he say that? Well, we'd have to go into uh, just even a review of language. Uh, the... Uh, the Roman system, in fact, you look up Samuel Johnson's dictionary of 1755, uh, just dealing even with the word Roman, because, uh, you know, that was a Roman society. Uh, we know we even have the Book of Romans, uh, where, you know, Paul basically um, authored and tried to uh, uh, educate a group or class uh, of individuals that were uh, at one time not party or not brought into the covenant. But as time went on, the Gentiles were entered in uh, to the covenant with God, entering into what would is say this relationship uh, being known as a follower of Christ, being a Christian. So when we uh, when we go to um, uh, Samuel Johnson's dictionary of 1755 on Roman, just what a uh, just the root of how these words work. Um, it will give you an understanding why uh, it's so important to realize that Jesus was speaking to people that were under this philosophy or theoretical, uh, you know, belief system. And so Roman, and I hope it's in this particular one, I generally read out of a, another volume, so I'm hopeful that this will be what it is, um, to romance, okay, which is what happens when they try to bring you into the Roman philosophy to romance means to lie to forge so uh, a romancer is a liar a forger of tales okay so therefore um when we're when we're basically uh uh you know looking at the you know the etymology of these words we have to we have to realize that uh uh, what was going on in the scripture there because uh, Christ was speaking to a Roman authority, of course, who would be promoting Roman philosophy. Okay, so when he asked Jesus what is truth, you could understand that he was working in what is fiction or a lie. So for him to ask Jesus what is truth to him, that was like a philosophical question for someone uh, who was surrounded by nothing but a theoretical Roman civil law system that does not operate in truth. It uses truth, but it mixes in error. So um, anyways, we, we know that uh, when you even look at the word deceive, um, even the Canadian, the, the Dictionary of Canadian Law, fifth edition, um, defines to deceive is to induce someone to believe that something which is false is true. Legal fiction in the same dictionary uh, defines it as an assumption of the law that something which is false is true. So in other words, uh, black is white and white can be black. It doesn't really matter. Uh, there's, there's actually an assumption that something that you would know generally or on, a, on an easy level of reasoning is actually an error or false, but we're going to treat it as true in the circumstance of what goes on within a legal court system. So this is how even the name works that we've done so much research on in the Christian Remedy and Law site regarding your God-given Christian name, you know, based on the event of Jesus Christ, uh, prior to that, it would have been a God-given name, but after the event of Christ and his death, who purchased all, both the righteous and the unrighteous, he, uh, he, our name came into that category, and that's why in English law, um, to have even a legal name where someone is willing to put their Christian free grace to the wayside and operate as legal, um, a legal name requires both a Christian name and this legal surname or patronymic. So anyways, uh, just a little bit of simplicity at that end. But when you really look at what was going on in that uh, in that, you know, narration that you see there in the conversation between Christ and Pontius Pilate, uh, it makes a lot more sense when you see it in this context.
All right, Dan. Thank you.